All right, these notes today are on solving multi-step equations uh, and proportions. We will do some proportions at the end. They are considered multi-step equations too, the way they are. Uh, first, we'll start with the steps to solving multi-step equations. Helpful hint, think backwards PEMDAS. We spoke about this a little bit the other day after we uh, talked about expressions and doing the PEMDAS uh, order of operations. And then we saw some one and two step equations. We also spoke about how when you solve an equation, you're basically uh, going in reverse, breaking, um, I mean, doing PEMDAS backwards. So you can think of that when you're solving an equation uh, to work it backwards to solve for a variable. Up here on the left, the steps are, excuse me, on the right. The steps are number one, distribute if necessary. You'll distribute if you see any parentheses uh, in your equation. That means you need to distribute the number outside the parentheses along with the sign that's in front of it into the parentheses uh, if necessary. Number two, combine like terms. Number three, solve. So today is all about examples, really. We don't have much, uh, you know, vocab today. It's mainly just examples today. So our first example is number one. Got the equation 9x plus 1 minus 7x minus 5 equals negative 20. So in this equation, the first thing you should see is that you have uh, the variable x twice. You have 9x and 7x. So before we can solve for x, the first thing we need to do is combine like terms. And we practiced this uh, on our last set of notes. <clears throat> the same way we did it in there, we're going to do it in here. We're going to start with grouping. The first thing I want to do, I want to group my variable, well, box my variables. So I'm going to box 9x, and I'm going to box negative 7x right here. And then I'm going to circle my constants here. Plus 1, negative 5. <clears throat> Doing that, I'm going to regroup the way my equation looks, 9x minus 7x then on the end plus 1 minus 5 all of that equals 20 negative 20 excuse me so then I want to combine like terms uh, 9x minus 7x is 2x and then you have a positive 1 minus 5. We get negative 4 equals negative 20. Now I got to the point where I have just a simple two step equation. Uh, the thing that makes this multi step is the fact that we had to regroup, combine like terms first. But now we're back to a two step equation, which you guys should recognize from the other day. At this point, all you got to do is take the two steps you need to take and solve. First step. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Cancel. Leaves me with 2x on this side. Equals negative 20 plus 4. It's going to leave me with negative 16. And then my last step is going to be to divide by 2. cancels leaves me with x x equals negative 16 divided by 2 negative 8 right. moving on to our next one the thing I want you to notice about this next equation number 2 first we only have one variable but it's on the right and we also have parentheses on this one so in this case, distribution would be necessary. Uh, the equation is 91 equals negative 7 times 3a minus 1. So on this one, the first thing we want to do is distribute. This is necessary. We want to distribute this negative 7 into the parentheses to the 3a and the negative 1. Both terms get it. So when I distribute, I need to rewrite my equation. Have 91 equals negative 7 times 3a, which is negative 
21a and then negative 7 times negative 1 this is a mistake some kids make all the time I have a negative 7 outside and this 1 has a minus sign in front of it so that makes it negative so it's negative 7 times negative 1 which is going to give me positive 7 here <clears throat> So my equation after the distribution is 91 equals negative 21a plus 7. Next thing I need to do is solve this two-step equation. Now, like I told you guys before, it's fine if the variable's on the right. It's not on the left like usual. That's fine. Just move everything away from the variable. Now we're just moving everything to the left. So my first thing I want to move is this plus 7 by subtracting it to the other side. So minus 7, minus 7 going to cancel. I'm going to bring down the variable that I didn't use, which is negative 21a. On this side, 91 minus 7 is positive 84. And then, after that, it's 84 equals negative 21a. Divide by negative 21. Divide by negative 21. Cancel. 84 divided by negative 21 will leave me with negative 4. And that equals A. If you don't like the way that looks, you know at the end, once you solve for the variable, you can always say A equals negative 4. Move it. Just flip the two around. So that's number 1 and 2. Number 3. This equation here, a little bit more complex, but it's doable, way doable. On this one, it says 4m minus 5 times 3m plus 10 equals 126. Now, this equation, I want you guys to try on your own, uh, but I do want to talk to you about some things first. On this one, the first thing you should notice is that you have to distribute. You need to distribute this negative 5, the whole thing, the minus sign and the 5, into the parentheses on both terms. And then you need to rewrite your uh, equation after you do that distribution. After that, you should also notice that you have two variables here and here. You need to combine those terms, and then you need to solve the equation. I want to see if you can do this on your own, so I want to give you a chance to do that. So I'm going to um, pause right now and let you guys do that. And I'll come back um, afterwards, and we'll talk about it. So number three was the one we were looking at. I just want to ask you to go through and try yourself. Um, the first thing we needed to do on number three was distribute the negative five to the three m into the ten and rewrite that. And so as you can see on my paper, I did that first, and then I rewrote my equation as four m and then minus fifteen m. Because I got negative 15m from the, when I distributed, and then minus 50 equals 126. That should be your equation after the distribution. And then after that, you should notice you have two variables in front right there that you can combine together. I didn't necessarily need to box them because they were already grouped together, but I did anyway. Uh, and then after that, I combined those two variables together and got 11m, negative 11m, minus 50 equals 126. Then from that point, I just got a two-step equation. Um, I need to solve for m. So after that, I added 50 to both sides to cancel it. Move it to the other side, and then I got 11m, negative 11m, equals 176. And then from there, I just had a one-step equation. Just had to divide by negative 11 on both sides, and divide it by negative 11, and I got my answer of m equals 16. Your work should look identical to that. So on this one, there's not many other ways to do this problem. <clears throat> uh, that is how you want to handle it. Let's look at number four now. Number four. Uh, this one reads negative three. Let's move my paper up a little bit. 
negative 3 and times k minus 8 equals, I mean, shoot, not equals, minus k plus 5 equals 23. On this one, this is where kids mess up a lot. <clears throat> you have double distribution on this one. The first distribution that you're going to do is negative 3 into this parenthesis here to the k into the negative 8. The second distribution that you're going to do is this minus sign into this parenthesis here to the k into the fi uh, positive 5. Now, a lot of kids don't recognize this as a distribution because it's just a minus sign here. So what I tell my kids is anything in parentheses you treat like it's a variable almost. So in front of any variable, I can always write the number 1. So, even though it's a minus sign right here, to help y'all out, when y'all see it like this, there's no, there's just a, I guess a sign and nothing uh, else in front of the parentheses, you can always put a 1 there. So, if I were you guys, I would probably add a 1 in, just so you can see it better, right here. So, you're going to say there's a 1 in front of the parentheses, and you need to distribute that negative 1 into the parentheses. Because if you don't do that and you don't change the signs of that stuff in the parentheses, because you multiply by a negative, when you try to solve this problem, it's going to throw the whole problem off. You may get some wild answer. You're trying to figure out why is your answer so off or some crazy decimal or something. It's probably because you set this one up wrong. Not saying that your answer was can't be decimals. It's just that on this one, it probably won't be. It's just that you need to set your equation up right. All right. So on this one... I need to distribute the negative 3 to both of these terms. And then I'm also going to distribute this negative 1 to both of these here. And I'm going to rewrite. So, first thing is negative 3k and then negative 3 times 8 negative 8, excuse me. So it's negative 3 times negative 8 would be a positive 24 right here. Okay. And then over here, you got negative 1 times k, which is going to give me negative 1k. Uh, I can just put minus 1k right here. And then negative 1 times 5, which is going to give me a minus 5 or negative 5. Equals 23. Then from there, I want to do my grouping. I'm going to box my variables. Circle my constants. negative 3k minus 1k then plus 24 minus 5 equals 23 then after that I want to combine my like terms in front I got negative 3k minus 1k that's going to give me negative 4k and then positive 24 plus 5, I mean minus 5, excuse me, it's going to give me a positive 19, and all of that equals 23. If you can make it to this point, you've made it to the two-step equation point, you should start to feel comfortable. This is the new stuff up here, just y'all combining like terms, and then, or oh, distributing, then combining like terms. Once you get to this point, this is what we've been working on already. You should be able to do two-step equations now. <clears throat> and once you make it here, just start moving. Minus 19, minus 19, cancels. Bring down negative 4K equals. Here you're going to get positive 4. And then... I need to divide by negative 4. K equals 
negative one. Sliding on. So, do this one at the bottom of the page called Translate and Solve. This is a uh, one of our multi step equations uh, situation written out as a uh, in sentence form. And we got to translate it to be able to write the equation and solve. Alright, so number five says five times the difference of twice a number, and three decreased by the sum of a number, and eight equals thirteen. So I'm gonna go right on top of this stuff, and um, while I'm reading it again, I'm gonna write in what I know in number form are in words that I can understand. So the first thing is five times. So I know this is gonna be the number five. And they said times, so that means multiplication for me. So five times the difference. When I hear the word difference, I don't know what you think of, but they've always told me in math that difference means subtraction. All right. So I'm going to think of subtracting right here. Of twice a number. Twice means two to me. I don't know what it means to you, but it means two to me. Twice a number. So they say a number, and they be naming numbers everywhere else. In this case, they say a number. In fact, they say a number, they don't know what that number is. So if they don't know what that number is, what do you think we should do there? Most of y'all should be saying y'all here right now, we need to put a variable in. Yes. And you know the most common variable that we use is x. So anytime they say a number, I'm going to put in an x. That's my mystery number, x. And 3. Well, that's obvious. And it says decreased by, and anytime I hear the word decreased too, that means taking something away. That means subtracting to me. So subtract by the sum. The sum, y'all should know, the sum is uh, the answer to addition. So I'm going to write uh, adding here to get the sum of the number the number again so we're going to say the variable x and 8 8 right here and the equals is easy obviously you got an equal sign and then 13 instead of writing it in word form they just wrote the word 13 so obviously no our equation is going to equal 13 <clears throat> so we need to uh, write this out now so the first part it says Five times the difference of twice a number and three. So twice a number, that's two x for me and three. They said they want to know the difference of those two. I'm put a minus sign in between them. But it said five times all that. So my first part of my equation should look like this. Five times the difference of two x. And so the difference is going to be minus three. That's my first part right there. That's all the way to this comma right here. I just set that up. And then they said that is going to be decreased by. So that's going to be subtracted by. And then it says the sum of a number, which is our variable, and 8. So in this case, it's going to be minus x, our number, plus eight because we want to know the sum of a number in eight. And that's gonna be uh subtracted by that. And all of that equals thirteen. Reading that, that's what they want you to pull from that and be able to write this equation. This set up this equation here. And once you set this equation up you should be able to solve. This equation is very similar to uh the one we just did in number four. Especially due to the fact that you're distributing twice again. In the first part, you're distributing into 5. The second part, 
look, you're distributing that negative sign. And I showed you what to do up here in number four when you just got a negative sign right here or a minus sign that you can either distribute into a parenthesis. I told you what to put in right here. I want you to do it yourself and solve this one. You can use number four as an example up there. I want to make sure you can solve this on your own. Okay? So I'm going to give you a second to do that. I'm going to pause again and I'll come back. Alright. So now we got a chance to work on it. I'm going to show you my finished product. Um, after my distribution, after I grouped, and then I combine like terms, and then I solve the equation. I got x equals 4. If you did your thing, you should have uh, got that same thing. Okay. <clears throat> so on the back, let's continue. On the back. We need to look at the steps for solving these equations when we have variables on both sides. All right, um, pretty similar to the steps in front, just with one additional step. So we're still going to start out with our distribution, uh, if necessary. Then we're going to combine our like terms. If we have like terms on either side of the equation that we combine, and then we're going to move our variables to one side because we're going to have variables on both sides on this equation. All right. To solve for a variable, you got to get it to one side of the equation first, so that's going to be the goal. And then after that, you can solve. <clears throat> Number one, six. This one, 5y minus 8 equals 3y plus 12. First thing you should notice about this one, obviously, we got variables on both sides. We got a y on both sides. Now, uh, we don't have distribution, so we can skip that. On either side of our equation, the like terms are already combined, so we can't combine like terms because it's just 5y here minus 8. These two don't go together. On this side, 3y plus 12 don't go together either, so the like terms are already combined. I need y'all to understand that on this one. Everything else we're doing from this point on is going to be about moving variables and then uh, doing inverse operations to get stuff to the other side. All right. <clears throat> So, the first thing I tell kids when I get ready to put my variable on uh, one side of the equation, I always choose my smaller variable. Now, smaller doesn't mean always the smaller number. It means the number that, let me say this, y'all get confused with negative and positive numbers. Remember, negative numbers are always smaller than positive numbers. Even if you got like negative 6 and a positive 3. Negative 6 is your smaller number, so that's the number I would move personally. That's just how I do. I always move my smaller variable. And the reason I do that is so I can keep my uh, variable positive at all costs if I have to. Sometimes it just doesn't work out that way, but uh, I always choose to move my smaller variable so I can keep my um, variables positive because a lot of y'all get messed up at the end when you move the bigger variable and then you just somehow drop your negative sign uh, when you shouldn't have or whatnot beforehand so just to keep stuff clean for me I always move my smaller variable but y'all can do whatever y'all want so for me on this problem uh, I'm gonna move the 3y now you can move the 5y well like I said if you do that you're gonna start off with a negative variable because once you subtract 5y to that other side it's gonna be 3 minus 3y minus 5y which will give you negative 2y I don't want a negative variable, so I'm going to do, like I said, I avoid it at all costs. <clears throat> but if you want to do it that way, that's fine. You can make sure you keep that negative sign until you do something with everything at the end. Alright. So like I said, I'm going to move this 3Y first by subtracting it here and here. It's going to cancel right here because that's what I want to do. I want to move my variable to the other side. I'm moving this whole thing to one side, not just the three. I'm, I'm not dividing the three off of here. No, I got to get my variable on one side first before I do any of that other equation stuff we usually do. So I'm moving my whole variable over here to this side. And then I'm going to get 2y because it's 5y minus 3y. Bring down negative 8 because I haven't used it. Equals... And then it's a positive 12 right here. 
since I don't drop my 3y on this side, I don't really need to write the plus sign. I can just write equals 12. <clears throat> Once you do that, now you've gotten yourself back to a two-step equation. Now I can solve. So at this point, I just want to do my stuff I need to do for two-step. Plus 8, plus 8, cancels. And then I get 2y equals 20. And then after that, I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2, cancel the 2, y equals 10. Alright, so that's me uh, moving my variable on one side and solving the equation. What I want you to do now is number 7 and number 8. On your own, I'm going to pause the video, and I'll come back after you finish those two. All right, we're coming back. just want to look at number uh, 7 and 8 real quick, so you should have worked on. Uh, number 7, you can see my work. I moved my uh, the negative 8x by adding 8x to both sides. I told you I always move my smaller variable. In this case, negative 8x is the smaller variable. Um, negative 8 is a smaller number than negative 6 if you know anything about your integers. That's why I moved this one. And once I moved it, I ended up getting a positive variable. Like I said, you could have moved negative 6 if you wanted. That's fine. When you would have added 6, 6x to uh, both sides, um, you would have got negative 2x as your variable on this side. And you would have kept working your equation. You would have been fine. You could have kept doing it and you should have came out with x equals negative 1 at the end. As you did, I'm telling y'all, some of y'all mess up with these negative variables. So if you can't avoid it, try to avoid it at all costs. But if you can't, work with it. There will be certain situations where you can't avoid it. Like for example, down here, it worked out for me, but on number 8, uh, I only had one choice. I didn't have a choice to move 7k. Because if I were to move 7k, there would have been nothing left on this side of the equation. My only choice was to move 3k over to this side. So whether that was the bigger variable or not, I would have had to have moved this variable to the left in this problem. So you have no choice when it's a situation like this. You're just going to have to move whatever variables over on this side to this side to keep this uh, equation balanced and to keep something on this side of the equation. So, But it worked out in this case because it was still smaller, so I still got a positive variable. But I'm just telling you, like some cases like this, you may not have a choice. And then once I did that work, I got 4k equals negative 36 divided by 4k equals negative 9. Easy work. Next one, number 9. Uh, we're going to distribute this 3 uh, to the parentheses. Then after that, uh, we're going to rewrite our equation. Then we're going to see that we have variables on both sides. And we're going to move... Uh, our variable, our smaller variable to do um, one side and then we'll work it out from there. So, number nine, like I said, start with my distribution here. And we write my equation. That's 18p because it's 3 times 6p. 3 times negative 1 is going to be negative 3 equals 11p minus 45. Then from there, got variables on both sides. Uh, I'm going to move my smaller variable, as I've been telling you. I'm going to take 11p and subtract it from this side and subtract it to this side. <clears throat> it's going to cancel itself over here. I'm going to rewrite uh, 18p minus 11p is going to be 7p minus 3 equals, bring down my negative 45 that I haven't used. Now I'm at the two-step equation form. Once you get here, y'all should start to feel real comfortable. Add 3, add 3, add 3, cancels. 7p equals, we add 3 to that, we're going to get negative 42. And we need to divide by 7. Divide by 7. Divide by 7. 
get P equals negative 6. All right. And that's going to be our answer for number 9. Moving on, let's knock out these uh, last two. These are proportions. Our rules for proportions. I kind of showed you proportions already in the other notes. Uh, but we're going to do them again here. Uh, cross multiply. This is the steps. Cross multiply. Distribute if necessary after the cross multiplication. Then solve. <clears throat> this first one is an easy proportion. Y'all should all already be able to do this. We're going to do this one pretty quickly. Um, remember, you can only uh, cross multiply when you have a proportion like this, meaning you have a fraction equal to a fraction. I know some of y'all was thinking cross multiply uh, the other day in class when y'all saw a fraction plus a fraction. No, that's not cross multiplication. That's just regular adding of fractions. You have to have an equal sign in the middle of stuff to cross multiply. If you don't have an equal sign in the middle of two fractions, do not try to cross multiply. That's not how cross multiplying works. <coughs> All right. Only when you got an equal sign can you cross multiply. I'm going to keep saying it because I want to be all stick in y'all head. I know a lot of y'all asked me about it, and that's not what we were trying to do. <clears throat> so here, 3 to the x, 4 to the 6, cross multiply. And I'm going to write an equation under here. 3 times x for me is 3x equals here 4 times 6, which is 24. And then from there, I'm going to solve this one-step equation once I set it up and cross-multiplying. Only thing I have to do, divide by 3, divide by 3, cancels, x equals 8. Done deal on that one. When they're this simple, it's very easy. The ones that y'all have trouble with are the ones over here. The ones where you have some expressions in here on your fractions. Alright. <coughs> Looking over to number 11. Let's do that one. And make sure you pay attention to this because we're only going to give you one of these, but you're going to see at least two of these on your uh, uh, test. At least. So you need to know how to do this one especially. So make sure you're paying attention. Cross multiplying here and here. And you need to rewrite all this out. Don't try to do this in your head or anything. You need to write this next line that I write out. So it don't matter which one you pick. Um, I start with this one on top here. So it's 2k plus 3 times 5. So I'm going to write this out as in front 5 and then in parentheses 2k plus 3. This is me multiplying 5 times 2k plus 3. But I want to show that. On the other side, I'm going to do the k plus 9 at the bottom times 3. So in front I'm going to do a 3 times k plus 9. This is me multiplying 3 times k plus 9 right here. I'm showing that. And y'all should see what I'm trying to set up. I'm setting up my distribution. But you need to do this. Some of my kids you try to do all this in the head and not and skip this step. Y'all, You would make a serious mistake doing that. You need to write it out so you can see it. Distribute, 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 and then write your lines. So, uh, 5 times 2K is 10K. 5 times 3, 15. Equals, on the other side, 3 times K is 3K. And then 3 times 9 is 27. Mm -hmm. So, this is my equation now with variables on both sides. You know the next thing I need to do, get my variable k on one side. I'm always going to go with my smaller one. In this case, 3k is my smaller one. I'm going to subtract 3k from this side, move it to this side here. Cancel, get my variable on one side. Now I have over here 7k, because 10k minus 3k is 7k. Bring down what I haven't used. I haven't used plus 15. I haven't used my positive 27, so I'm just going to write 27 now. Drop the positive. <clears throat> then after that, two-step equation time again. Subtract now. Um, 15. Subtract 15. Cancels. And 
397k equals 27 minus 15 equals 12. So I got 7k equals 12. Last thing I need to do is divide. Divide by 7, divide by 7. This cancels. K equals, and then if you try to put this in the calculator, 12 divided by 7, you should know you're not going to get a whole number. <clears throat> Don't get nervous at this point and think you did something wrong. If all your work is right, you should be confident and know, hey, my answer is a decimal. But I know I can't leave it in decimal form right now because that's not what he's been asking for. You need to leave it in fraction form, simplified fraction form. In this case, you, and I told you you can leave them in proper. In this case, uh, there's nothing that would go into 12 and 7 evenly. So, honestly, they, this is the most reduced form. So, this will be my answer, 12 over 7. You can submit this to me, and this will be the answer. I don't need a mixed number. I just want to keep it in the present and proper fraction. That'll be fine right there. Uh, <clears throat> if we ever ask you for decimals, then you give us decimals. But in this case, we only ask you for improper fractions, so keep it like that. Um, and that's our last problem. This is a good one to go back and reference um, when you're doing your work, your practice work, because you're going to have a couple of them on there. And also uh, the stuff that we do on Thursday, the study guide, is going to have a couple on there too. It's a good problem to go back and refer to and look over. Um, and that's it for our notes. So this was Solving Multi-Step Equations Notes. Uh, like I said, it's another video that's going to be posted, so you can look at it as many times as you want or need to. Um, and it will be there for you. Alright.